Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining me today. My name is Kathleen Lovito, and I'll be your host for today's webinar titled Tax Tips, Practical Ways to Reduce Your Tax Bill. Joining me today is John Sajanowski, Relationship Manager for Asthma Wealth Management and Trust. At the end of this presentation, we will hold a question and answer session. So if you have a question during the presentation, please enter it into the question bar on your screen. This monthly webinar series is brought to you by Asthma Wealth Management and Trust. Our vision is to ensure the financial security and independence of members of the armed forces community, active, retired, honorably discharged service members, and their families. We accomplish this by being the premier provider of financial planning, investment management, and trust services for all branches of the military. We are Asthma's trust company. Asthma stands for American Armed Forces Mutual Aid Association. ASMA, created in 1879, is the longest-standing not-for-profit association exclusively serving the military. We empower military families with affordable financial solutions. ASMA focuses exclusively on the needs of military families and provides innovative, personalized, and lifestyle-appropriate financial services. A key point that sets ASMA Wealth Management and Trust apart from other companies is that we are fiduciary. What that means is we have a legal obligation to act in your best interest and for your benefit. One important disclaimer before we begin this month's presentation. The information presented herein was compiled from sources believed to be reliable. This presentation is for educational purposes and is furnished without responsibility for completeness or accuracy. Its general information is not specific investment, legal, or tax advice for any individual. Do not rely on this presentation alone to guide your financial planning decisions. Since each individual situation is unique, your needs for financial services will differ. For individual advice, please contact us directly. We produce this webinar series in-house with our own professional staff as a service to our members and to help them better understand the resources available to them. I will now turn over to John to begin the presentation. Thank you, Kathleen. Here's a brief agenda of our webinar today. We will first look at a few of the major changes to the federal tax law introduced over the past few years. Then we will look at the phases of life preparing for retirement, immediately before retirement, and while in retirement to look at some key tax concepts. Then we will discuss some of the specific tips to reduce your overall tax burden. We will also talk about how taxes and income in retirement impacts Social Security benefits. We are all familiar with this quote from one of our founding fathers. The impact of death is inevitable. However, there are steps we can take along the way to reduce the impact of taxes. The Tax Cuts and Jobs Act of 2017 had a dramatic effect on the U.S. income tax system. Many of this law's provisions took effect in 2018 and impact your return for 2018 and your planning for 2019 and beyond. For most taxpayers, there is an overall reduction in your effective tax rate, the average rate at which your income is taxed. One of the major changes for the new tax law is that all tax brackets were changed. Thus, most marginal tax rates were shifted down, while the income brackets for each were shifted up. The overall impact is that for most tax filers, your effective tax rate was reduced. However, some ta tax aspects were simplified or eliminated. The amount of the standard deduction was almost doubled, while personal exemptions were eliminated. For many filers, the standard deduction will be greater than itemized deductions making filing and record keeping a bit simpler. Many common deductions were modified, such as for state and local taxes. This deduction is now capped at $10,000. For people living in states with high property and local taxes, this could be a disadvantage when you file your federal return. For homeowners, mortgage interest deductions were impacted. For those of you funding a home purchase after December 15th in 2017, 
you can only deduct interest on the portion of your home loan up to $750,000. The previous cap of $1 million remains for those with loans prior to December 15, 2017. The interest on home equity loans is no longer deductible under the new tax law. Good news for those of you with dependent children. The child, the child tax credit was doubled. Although you cannot take a personal exemption for each child, you can claim a $2,000 child tax credit, and this also includes a higher adjusted gross income level to claim this credit. The state taxes were also impacted by the tax law change. The exemption for estate taxes was doubled, up to $11.4 million for individuals and $22.8 million for couples. The annual gift exclusion remains at $15,000 per recipient. However, remember that couples can each individually give and receive using this exclusion. For example, a retired husband and wife can each give $15,000 to their married children, a husband and wife. Thus, the total gift exclusion in one year could be up to $60,000 for a retired couple gifting to a married child and their spouse, thus reducing their overall estate tax. Before we move on to, spe before we move on to specific tax strategies, it is important to remember that taxes and tax planning is complicated. Even one of the 20th century's smartest scientists had a hard time understand, understanding the U.S. federal tax filing process. For all of us, it is important to seek professional advice from a financial advisor and tax professional when deciding what to do for your specific situation. For most of us, we can be categorized into one of three phases with respect to our retirement preparations. If you're about 10 years out or more from retirement, you are in the growth stage of retirement preparation. Your focus should be growing your retirement savings while minimizing your current tax bill. However, there are steps you can take now to reduce your tax bill while in retirement. As you get closer to retirement, say within 10 years, your focus shifts now to creating a variety of tax efficient retirement income streams. Also, now is a good time to educate yourself on your potential Social Security benefits and strategies for when to claim your benefit. Once you finally retire, your focus should now be on enjoying your retirement and not worrying about the day-to-day -day managing of your accounts. However, taxes in retirement can eat away at a fixed income and reduce your standard of living. Thus, it is important to understand the tax implications of various types of retirement distributions. Again, I want to remind everyone that we are not tax advisors and are not making any specific tax recommendations. We provide recommendations from a general perspective and always recommend take talking with your tax advisor about your specific situation. For those of you preparing for retirement, it is prudent to max out your workplace-sponsored retirement plans, such as a 401k or a 403b. Remember that these contributions are generally pre-tax. Along with the traditional IRA, you don't pay tax on the contributions you make this year. When you finally do take distributions from this account in retirement, the entire distribution is treated as ordinary income and is taxed at your marginal income tax rate. Even if you can't afford to make a 401k contribution up to the annual limit, it's a good practice to at least contribute as much as necessary to get any match that your employer may provide. If you don't have an employer-provided plan, you should be eligible to contribute to an IRA for yourself and possibly your spouse, that is a Roth IRA. For 2019, the contribution limits for IRAs went up. Contributions made to a Roth IRA are after tax. Thus, you, you pay taxes on the contribution in the year made. However, all the funds in a Roth IRA grow tax-free, and distributions are also tax-free when taken later in retirement. Contribution limits for both traditional and Roth IRAs have changed. 
These limits are based on your modified adjusted gross income. For a traditional IRA, your contributions may be deductible, depending on whether you have an employer-provided pension plan. Your contribution amount is phased out when your modified adjusted gross income is between $64,000 and $74,000 if you're filing single, and $103,000 to $123,000 if you're married filing jointly. For a Roth IRA, the allowed income limits for contributions were significantly raised during the 2017 tax overhaul. Although these contributions are not deductible, those who earn up to $122,000 single and $193,000 married filing jointly can fully contribute to a Roth IRA. A health savings account is another tax advantage tool that you can use. It's a tax advantage medical savings account available to workers who are enrolled in a high deductible health plan. Funds contributed to a health savings account are not subject to federal income tax when contributed. Unlike a, unlike a flexible spending account, funds in a health savings account can roll over and accumulate from year to year. After age 65, you can take a distribution from your health savings account for any reason without penalty, but the distribution will be taxed as ordinary income, similar to a traditional IRA or 401k distribution. As you're preparing for retirement, you should understand the tax implications of the funds contributed to and then later withdrawn from each type of account. Traditional IRAs and 401ks have contributions that are pre-tax dollars. You get a tax advantage during the year you make a contribution. However, when you withdraw from that account later during retirement, each dollar you take out, both the original contribution and its growth, is considered ordinary income and is taxed at your marginal tax rate. This may also impact how much overall tax you pay on other benefits in retirement, such as Social Security. For Roth types of accounts, there is no tax advantage on the contribution each year. However, all the funds in the account grow tax-free, and when the withdrawals are made in retirement, none of the withdrawal is taxed as federal income. Plus, there is no required minimum distribution for a Roth IRA. Thus, if you don't need the funds after you reach age 70 and a half, they can remain and grow in the account. A third and often overlooked type of retirement savings is a non-qualified savings. This is money that you might save in a regular savings account, a CD, or a brokerage account. Each year, you may be subject to taxes on the income or capital gains from these accounts. However, when these funds are used to fund retirement, they may be more favorably treated with capital gains taxes. As you get closer to retirement, you need to be, you need to be careful to refine your income tax strategy. As we mentioned earlier, each type of retirement account is treated slightly different with respect to taxes, as well as the restrictions on how much you can contribute each year and how and when distributions are made. Near retirement is a good time to update your financial plan and take action as to how you can create retirement income streams. Further, you should start educating yourself on Social Security retirement benefits and develop a claiming strategy that is consistent with your overall retirement financial plan. Post-retirement, congratulations, you finally reach retirement. However, no one ever retires from taxes in this country. Even in retirement, we are required to file tax returns. When you do take distributions from your pre-tax retirement accounts, Make sure you have a portion withheld to cover your income taxes. There are two impacts on Social Security that may reduce your benefit and cause your benefits to be taxed at higher rates. If you claim your Social Security benefits prior to reaching your full retirement age, you are subject to an earnings test. 
if your combined income exceeds the level of this earnings test, then Social Security will withhold a portion of your benefits. However, once you reach full retirement age, this constraint goes away. Whether you continue to work or not in retirement, your Social Security benefit may be taxed at either 50 or 85% if your combined income exceeds certain fixed thresholds. Again, if you claim your Social Security benefits prior to full retirement age, you will incur a penalty for any earned income you, you receive each year. From ages 62 to full retirement age, you will incur a $1 penalty for every $2 you earn above the threshold of $17,640. In the year you reach full retirement age, this amount is increased to $46,920, and the penalty is only $1 for every $3 earned over this amount. These amounts are indexed for inflation, so the threshold changes year to year. When you reach full retirement age, the Social Security Administration will recalculate your monthly benefit and will allow you to recoup the amount that was retained due to the earnings test. On a federal level, Social Security benefits may be taxed as regular income. For those of you who are married and filing jointly, if your combined income is below $32,000, then none of your benefit is taxed. If your combined income is between $32,000 and $44,000, then 50% of your benefit is taxed. Above $44,000, then 85% of the benefit is taxed. For all other filing categories, the thresholds are a bit lower as listed on the slide. For those retirement funds saved in pre-tax accounts, such as a traditional IRA or a 401k, when you reach the age of 70 and a half, you are required to start drawing down those funds. Up till now, Uncle Sam has not received any tax dollars on the funds in those accounts. Now he wants his share. Starting in the year you reach 70 and a half, you must take an annual distribution for your pre-tax accounts. A calculation is made each year to determine how much is required. This calculation is determined by your life expectancy and the total amount of funds in these accounts. This distribution is then treated as ordinary income. However, if your required minimum distribution is donated directly to a qualified charitable organization, then no income tax is required. For those who neglect to take their annual RMD, the IRS will claim a 50% penalty on the amount that was missed. While in retirement, careful planning can help minimize income taxes and avoid penalties which allows you to use more of your hard-earned savings for your own purposes rather than for the government's. This little cartoon illustrates some of our frustration with taxes. The IRS gets a portion of your income. How big a portion is dependent upon your financial and tax planning in the years as you prepare for retirement. In summary, no matter which stage of retirement preparation you are in, pre-retirement, near retirement, or finally in retirement, you should have a tax strategy to minimize your annual tax bill. By planning ahead and tailoring the types of investments you hold, you'll gain more flexibility and can take advantage of tax-free growth and or tax-free withdrawals. For example, a retiree could select a more growth-oriented asset allocation for assets and accounts they don't intend to use until much later in retirement. The best way to approach taking distributions is to make the most of the assets. A balanced approach, which selectively withdraws from taxable, tax-deferred, and tax-free accounts can help control taxes the best and have the potential to maintain a portfolio for a longer period of time as taxes are reduced. 
by having a variety of retirement accounts, you could take advantage of the different ways these assets are treated for tax purposes. In conclusion, there are a few points I would like to highlight. Tax laws change frequently. Understand how your investment decisions are affected by the current tax law. Plan ahead. Choosing the right investment types of accounts can give you more flexibility in retirement and help minimize your tax burden. Of course, get professional help. The tax laws are complicated. Penalties are stiff if you don't pay the right amount at the right time. And the comprehensive financial plan will help you prepare for retirement and develop a strategy to minimize your tax burden. Thank you for listening right, today. John, that was very informative. Thank you so much for all that information. So while you were presenting, we did have a few questions come in. So let's address some of those now. To our listeners, if you think of another question uh, later, please reach out to us at wealthmanagement at asthma.com or by using the uh, contact information on the slide here. But for the questions submitted, the first one we have is, is it not too late to make either a traditional or a Roth IRA contribution to, for 2018? It's not too late to make either a traditional or a Roth IRA contribution for 2018. You have up till April 15th to make a 2018 contribution. But please make sure when you make that contribution that your investment company knows that it's for 2018 and not 2019. Great, thank you. Next question we have is, are there any tax advantages in retirement if I contribute to a Roth IRA instead of a traditional IRA? Yes, there are advantages. And they're because the two types of IRAs are different, so they have different characteristics. Contributions to a Roth IRA are after tax. You pay up the income taxes on the money you contribute. However, after age 59 and a half, and after you've had the Roth account for more than five years, you can take a distribution from that Roth IRA without penalty and without having to pay any income taxes. On the other hand, all distributions from your traditional IRA are taxed at your marginal rate, no matter when you take them. Great, we have time for one more question. The question is, who should I talk to so that I can minimize the taxes that I have, that I will have to pay in retirement? A tax professional will be able to assist you with specific tax questions and strategies that deal with your individual financial and tax situation. However, as you are preparing for and planning for retirement, consulting a financial advisor will allow you to create a comprehensive financial plan that will include the tax ramifications for each of your retirement goals. Great, thank you so much, John. Again, if any of our listeners think of questions later, they can reach out uh, using the information on the screen or by emailing wealthmanagement at aspen.com. So we'll go ahead and break here for now, but please don't hesitate to reach out for assistance whenever you need it. We do this every day for military community and it is our pleasure. This weekend, you'll receive a follow-up email with instructions on how to access a recording of this presentation. And you can always register for future webinars and review past webinars at asthma.com slash webinars. If you found this information useful, we encourage you to please share it with your friends and family. Our membership grows stronger every year because you introduce those in your military community to asthma. Thank you again to everyone listening for joining us today. We look forward to our next opportunity to assist you.